Hello guys. Today I would like to talk about a nice and aggressive opening that you can play against the move d4 by white. So here you can go for something that is called the Charlie Gambit, where you basically sacrifice a pawn, but you are the first one to develop a piece. So the pros of this opening are, firstly, majority of your opponents is going to happily accept this Gambit, even though they are not going to be happy. Secondly, there are some nice traps to it. And thirdly, if you just follow the most common replies by white in some variations, they are simply going to make mistakes. There is also one drawback, and that's this opening is not suitable for Grandmasters. So if you are a Grandmaster watching my video, like what are you doing? Go read the book or something. Alright, so once we are in this initial position, there are plenty of ways how white can continue, but against pretty much anything, our setup is still going to be the same. So this is like super easy to learn. Let's start by having a look at the most common line. So knight to f3 is most played here. And actually in this position, a lot of players, including me, make a mistake of going bishop to g4 right away. Now this move runs into queen to d4, which is kind of uh, annoying. So it's better to first develop knight to c6. So now queen to d4 is impossible. And here they go, usually knight to c3. Now we can bring our bishop to g4. And here they play pawn to e3 and we can play queen to e7. So this is our main setup to go with these pieces out as quickly as possible so we can long castle as quickly as possible and launch an attack. So here white usually continues with bishop to e2. We can get long castled. And already here, almost 25% of players on Leech's database made a mistake or rather blunder of playing a short castle which runs into bishop captures on f3, bishop recaptures and now bishop captures on h2 unleashing our rook that will pick up the queen on next turn. But of course most players will be aware of these tactics and will not castle here but rather block the d file with their bishop. After this you can go knight to f6, simple developing move and here most players will short castle and after that I recommend to go h5. So in this position three moves have been played by white most frequently and that is h3, knight to d4 or queen to e1. All of them had some logic behind them but are losing mistakes. So pawn to h3 is the most played one. Against this you can capture this knight, there you capture with the bishop and here you play queen to e5. So you are threatening a checkmate and the only way to deal with this for white is to push the g pawn. But after this you can play h4, undermining this pawn. They cannot capture, they cannot push it because they hang mate. And actually most players here simply uh, blunder bishop to g4 check. So you can catch this and even though they can recapture with the queen and it's still a check, you can now push f5 harassing the queen away. So they usually go queen to f3 and then you can open the h file. So you have this nice pressure, you have this nice pressure and in the future anywhere your bishop moves, then this is hanging. So with all these threats you are easily winning in this position. All right, let's go back. The second move that is uh, most played is knight to d4. So against this we are simply going to capture this knight and white needs to recapture back. It is never a good idea for white to capture our bishop on g4 because they would simply allow our rook into the play on the h file. So just keep that in mind. So they need to recapture our knight and here we are actually able to capture on h2 with check and sacrifice our bishop. Because after the king captures we can capture with our rook on d4 and now we are threatening to go queen to d6 that would be a check and we would be picking up this bishop next turn. So what white needs to do here is run back to g1 with their king but still our queen comes to the d file we are the queen to d7 and we are threatening to capture this bishop and unfortunately the bishop cannot be saved. Even if they try to hold on to the bishop with something like knight to b1, we can go knight to e4 and we have enough attackers 
on this pinned bishop and we will be picking it up next turn. Plus, now the white king is wide open and pretty fragile. So that's not good for white. Now let's have a look at if they play the third option at this queen to e1. So after this we are going to first capture this knight on f3 and after they recapture once again we have this amazing sacrifice on h2. Because after they capture we can now go knight to g4 check. So the white king needs to be really careful here because if he chooses to run back to g1 then this is a queen loss after queen to h4. Now they need to capture this knight, otherwise it's a checkmate, but after we recapture, now we have opened the h-file and we are once again threatening checkmate and the only way is to push the f-pawn to have some escape square, but we can cut this king off with our pawn and here they need to give up the queen to extend the game. So that's not good for white. The king actually needs to go forward after uh, knight to g4 check but it has to go to h3. If they go to g3, here is once again a quick checkmate after queen to e5 check, they need to go to h4 and after pawn to g5, they need to go to h3 and this is once more checkmate. So the correct move for white would be to go king to h3, but after that we can play queen to d6 and with this we are still threatening a checkmate and we are as well threatening this bishop. So white here needs to stop the checkmate of course and they can do it with either pushing the g-pawn or playing uh, rook to h1, simply they need to cover this h2 square, but in either case we are simply going to uh, regain our piece and after this exchange happens they actually need to also capture this knight because we are threatening to fork the king and the rook. So they help, uh, help us to open our second rook here. And after all these exchanges, black is going to be up a pawn and have a winning endgame. All right, so this would pretty much summarize all the most common basic mistakes and how to punish them. Now let's just have a look at some other variations and how to punish some other mistakes. So I'm going to actually open up a game that I played recently and talk about that. So in this game, my opponent happily accepted the game beat and went for pretty much all the same stuff except that he played pawn to e4 instead of pawn to e3, as usually they do. But notice that I will just continue with my uh, development plan and actually my opponent plays exactly the same moves as at the games that we've just been watching. And here after h5, uh, my opponent tried to go for knight to d5 to harass my queen. This is kind of a common mistake because oftentimes people forget that this knight was actually protecting this pawn and they just hang it so you can capture with your queen. And now the material is equal and we have an attack ongoing. So here my opponent went like, well, let me at least capture your knight and damage your pawn structure. But this kind of only helps me because now I can use this open G file for attacking purposes. So my opponent here tries to harass my bishop away, but I don't really care about the bishop anymore. All I want is to have the G file. And my opponent here foolishly captured the bishop, which is not a great move. I recaptured the pawn and now the knight is hanging, but my opponent went like danger levels and he attacks my queen but it does matter, I don't really care about the queen, all I want is to use the g-file and my opponent captured the queen and then this was checkmate. Alright, let's look at another game. So oftentimes people are going for the setup with a light square bishop fianchetto. So let's talk about that for a minute. In this game my opponent once again accepted the game bit and on move 5 he goes for g3 to fianchetto his light square bishop. Notice I am still going to play all the standard moves. And here knight to d2 is actually the best move to block the d file. But I just continue with knight to f6 and here my opponent plays b3. So he wants to fianchetto both of his bishops. This setup doesn't work for white. Let me explain why. 
Here you can go bishop to b4. And if you notice, we are pressuring this knight and it is a pinned knight. And although white is protecting it once, twice, three times, we can uh, simply add another attacker with knight to e4, or we can also simply remove this knight from protection of this knight. So that's why uh, we can exploit this setup from white. And here the engine is recommending pawn to c3, but we can just capture this. Now the rook is hit. So if the rook moves here, just a simple bishop to f5 uh, and the rook is trapped and this is winning. I would say this is like the simplest way to win some material and, and obtain a winning position. Although the engine thinks that after rook to b1, it is better to go for this capture and just use all these pieces to attack even more and that's stronger. But I would simply suggest to go bishop to f5 and win some material and have, in, have a winning position. So that's why b3 doesn't work for white. Actually, the best move here for white would be to play c3, which is also the most played move. And here you can go for this little trick. You can go rook to e8. So now you are hitting this pawn. So they might try to cover it with their rook. And here you capture the knight on f3. So if they recapture with the knight, then, you know, this is a, this is a possibility to win some material. So they should capture with the bishop. And after this, knight to e5 to hit the bishop. And I would say that uh, the mentality of white players who Fian cut out the light square bishop is going to be the same. They want to preserve this bishop and not just trade it for the knight, which is uh, what engine recommends here. But I think most humans will just simply play bishop back to g2. But after that, knight to d3. They cannot capture your knight because of the back rank problems. So they would have to move the rook to save it. And here knight captures on f2. What a move. And they, if they capture the knight, well then you pin the rook and this position is actually winning for black. All right, let's have a look at another game. So in this game, my opponent, first of all, accepted the game bit. And then he goes for these uh, safety pawn pushes or how to say this. So this is not a very good idea to play in such a slow way against a gambit. So I just continue with my usual plan. Uh, here he plays h3. So I decided to exchange these knights because now uh, by him capturing with this knight, now I will have this open once again for my rook. So I get long castled. And here my opponent didn't pay attention what's happening on the d-file and played pawn to g3 in hopes of Tian capturing this bishop. But here, of course, we are already getting a better position after bishop captures on g3 because now they cannot capture the bishop because of this attack. So my opponent moved his queen to b3. I just retreat my bishop to d6. And here after bishop to e3, there is another tactic that you should be mindful of, of this queen sacrifice, because you can actually capture this bishop and they cannot capture back because bishop back to g3 is a checkmate. So a nice pattern, which uh, if you are able to recognize, just go for it. You need to have your rook already on the d file and their king needs to be boxed in with this bishop and this pawn. So to illustrate this, let me show you another game. So in this one, my opponent also went for some pretty weird moves in the opening after he plays bishop to e3. So setting, <laughs> setting his bishop to be captured by the queen. And here he plays queen to d5. I didn't really understand the point of this move, but I just long castled. Now I'm threatening the discovery attack on his queen. So he moved his queen to b3. And after knight to f6, he plays this wrong move h3, which allows queen captures on e3, because after he recaptures, once again, bishop to g3 was checkmate. 
All right, guys, this is pretty much everything that I wanted to cover in this video. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And as always, have fun, take care and bye.